Hello, Internet. My name is Ryan Ingram, and this is my son, Jackson. <laughs> and uh, I know over the past week I've been kind of promising a video this morning about the roof being replaced and kind of a full time lapse from start to finish with the roof going on. Now the shingles are finally making it onto the roof, but we ran into just a few issues over this past week. Now, none of them were major or earth shattering, and I know anybody that's taken on a project of this size can relate to things not necessarily going as planned. So the first thing is the tear off took a little bit longer than we were expecting. It's just a really steep, really large roof. And also, as we started scraping off this roof, we noticed a lot more wood and you know, just damage from the, the roof being in the condition it was for so long. So there was a lot more repair that needed to be done than we anticipated. So that's fine. And then one thing that did happen that I thought was kind of funny is the crane truck we used in order to get the shingles up to the roof uh, broke on the first run. So as it was taking the first bundle of shingles up to the roof so that we could actually install it, uh, it kind of froze in midair. So that took about a day to resolve, which added obviously a day to the overall roof installation. But I'm really excited. It is finally dried in. It dried in for the first time right as the snow started. So this is the first time that it has precipitated in any way. Get out of the camera, silly. Uh, since it's rained or snow, moisture has fallen from the, from, from the sky and it hasn't negatively impacted this structure. So we do have some structural repairs being done tomorrow morning. I'm really excited about that. The house has uh, sunk or is sinking in a couple of different places just from that roof being exposed and the big holes that have been there for a really long time. So tomorrow we're gonna get all those fixed and we're gonna slowly start working on jacking up the property. Now, we have run into some issues this week and some of them are expensive, but they're all okay. Uh, one thing, you know, hindsight being 2020, had I known that this was gonna happen, I would have addressed it beforehand, but there's one chimney on this property. There's four in total, and one of them was just in really bad condition. It was loose. I was in the process of falling down. It was a huge safety hazard to the roofers that were working, so we had to knock that one over. Now, some of those bricks fell apart on the way down, but that's okay. Uh, had I known that beforehand, I definitely would have sent a mason or some type of chimney repair expert uh, up to the roof to fix that and stabilize it before we started installing the roof. So, you know, you live and you learn. I'll check those out before I replace a roof with such awesome chimneys in the, <laughs> it's kind of cold in here. There's no heat yet. Uh, before I start replacing a roof with a house that has chimneys like this again. But that's okay. There is a section on the back of the house that needs to be completely torn off. And that area does have some bricks. So we're gonna be able to match those bricks by taking them from there and putting them back onto the chimney because we're not gonna rebuild that addition that needs to be torn off with brick. We're gonna go back with frame. So that's exciting. Now, the second mistake that I made, I'm not happy about this one at all, but long-term, it's gonna be fine. And that is that there's a huge delinquent water bill that comes along with this property. Now the purchase price for this property is zero dollars. Uh, this property has been given to me. Now it does have liens that need to be paid, delinquent taxes that need to be paid. So let's just add a delinquent water bill uh, to that. Now, I didn't expect that, but it'll be okay. Uh, what I did learn throughout this process is the city of Dayton, they charge about $45 just for having a meter in the property, whether you're using anything or not. So it being vacant for about 20 years, what is that, like 80 quarters of $45 uh, that we're gonna have to pay. So it came out to be $4,500 and $4,511.41. So we're gonna have to get that brought current before we can get the water turned back on. We're gonna have a new ser water service line installed on Monday, which will also be about $4,800. So, hey, $10,000 to have some water in this place. I guess it's worth it. I guess you're gonna need to like bathe or something at some point, huh? <laughs> so, that, uh, that'll be fun. And the third thing that I'm having a, a huge issue in figuring out like what I'm gonna do is I've stumbled across two different schools of thoughts when it comes to these windows. So there are some historic people that love preserving every aspect of the historical nature of the home.
And they say, 100% restore the windows, don't replace them. These windows will last forever. They're good for another 100 years if you care for them properly. So, you know, refinish them, but definitely do not replace them. And you've got some other people that will say, hey, those windows are always going to be drafty. They are, you know, never going to live up to expectations. They're not necessarily going to work appropriately. So go ahead and replace them because it's more functional. Uh, I don't know what school, of, school, of, school you fall into, but I would love for you to let me know in the comments because I'm completely torn on what to do. Now, I've gotten some quotes that are as low as 20000 and as high as 60000 So I'm trying to figure out uh, what to do. I don't know how much it's going to cost to go through, sand these, make it match the woodwork, do some repair for the rot. I know there's vinyl options where you can put grids in the windows. A lot of these windows, you know, they're double hung wooden windows, but there's nothing necessarily special about them. Some of these historic homes in the area have some great like uh, kind of scallop designs or uh, almost like chevron patterns inside the panes of the windows. And this is not them. This is just your basic wooden frame. So we'll see really what happens, but I'm leaning towards replacing, but I haven't quite made up my mind. And one of the only reasons I'm leaning that way is because I don't know how much like labor I'm going to have in restoring and all of that. So it might be just as expensive when you get through all 60 windows in this house to uh, refinish them as it will to just replace them. And I know, you know, in speaking with my wife, the functionality is really important. And if we want to open up a window, we want to have the ability to open it up. So that's what I've got. But hey, since I wasn't able to do the video that, we, that I mentioned about the roof yet, now it's coming, but just not yet, uh, let's go ahead and walk around this house, do a little bit of a tour, and I will tell you kind of what I'm thinking for the design of this house. And Jackson has recently picked out what room he wants to be his, so maybe he will show you around that. Do you want to do that? Yes. <laughs> let's do it. All right, so this is the foyer or the entryway of the abandoned mansion or our future home. And this is the front door. And I don't know if you can see it from there, but this thing is huge. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it, only because it's 7 foot 10. And uh, we're going to get some type of glass, hopefully some type of stained glass or something like that to go there. I think that would look great. And since this was turned into a group home or some type of otherwise like nursing home back in 1940, uh, a lot of different modifications have been made that we're going to remove. Like you can see like an old like commercial, uh, I don't even know what you call them, just the thing that slows down the door from closing. And then also these two doorways here uh, were added in. You can see the original woodwork that we're going to spend a lot of time uh, removing the paint. You can still see in some of these areas uh, the natural wood and the shellac still intact. So hopefully that paint comes off easily. And one of the things that I think is just really bizarre about this house is most of these older homes, like the, the main staircase is a real showpiece and they're pretty ornate. But here it's uh, just kind of closed off. So I'm guessing that whenever we get around to the living room, uh, you'll see that there's potential that the stairwell could have you know, come down and opened up, but I really don't know, and it's really difficult to say. But let's go into this music room, which is also kind of the most well-preserved room in the house. Now, one thing that I really love is this plaster work. It's still pretty well intact. I think this is the, the, the room that it's most preserved in. So part of the process of us restoring this is we're going to remove all of the ceilings in the entire home. That's just going to make it easier for us to add central air, you know, forced heat, forced air, uh, the new HVAC system, update all the electric, and uh, really just address any type of structural issue we may find in the joists. So we can preserve this plaster work as we remove the ceiling. And one of the things that I really want to do is as I've looked at the other homes in this neighborhood, I've noticed a lot of around the crown molding area, uh, a lot of detail, and in some cases even hand painted. So my goal is, if we can get to the end of this project without running out of money, uh, to actually have someone come in and add detail. I also don't know if you're, you can see it, but these windows, these four windows here, they're curved. So these are the only ornate windows in the house, or just not your standard window. So it might look like a little bit of an optical illusion, but it's got 
a slight kind of radius to it. This is going to be our dining room. I think that's probably what it was in the past, but all of these rooms have been kind of converted into a bedroom one way or another. But you can see these huge interior doors. All the doors in the house are 7 foot 10, which is pretty crazy. They're all intact still, but they all need a lot of love. And we're going to keep the same kind of wainscoting uh, design around the house. And one of the things that I know we're excited about as a family is having a fireplace in the dining room. So there's about seven fireplaces in this whole house. And my goal is to make all of them functional. But again, as you can see, uh, this area took a beating from a hole being in the roof. And it's going to be fine. We're going to take out all the, all the ceilings and uh, put up new drywall ceilings. And one of the very helpful neighbors said that what his biggest renovation tip is to just go ahead and cut into the plaster work anywhere that's needed uh, to save time. He said it's pretty simple to patch or otherwise repair this old plaster work, so don't be scared to cut into it to speed up the uh, bringing everything up to date and up to code. So that's going to help out. And also just as we take out the ceilings, we're going to be able to find any area that might be weak from water damage or that otherwise needs to be sistered, stabilized, or repaired. All right, we had to skip a good portion of this home just because it's gray sky season here in the Midwest and the lighting just isn't sufficient for us to do that great of a tour. But before we ended it for the day, I wanted to give Jackson the opportunity to showcase the room that he has selected that is going to be his room. Do you have anything that you want to say about it? This is above the curved windows uh, where we just saw. So this room also has these curved windows. And I think even if we replace these, we're going to, all of the windows throughout the home, we're going to try to figure out a way to preserve these. But as you can see, I mean, the ceiling have really taken a beating from all the moisture that's been coming in. So we're going to pull those down. And then I think, you know, with a lot of prep work, a lot of <laughs> elbow grease, we can bring these walls back up to speed so long as we could fish new electric in and bring it all up to code safely. Well, hey, that's all we have today for the tour, so thank you so much, and I will talk to you all soon.